Hello, this is Byron with DragonBlogger.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Zvox 450 uh, sound base home theater system. Uh, I have it right here next to me. Um, it's going to be a little difficult to try to show it off in the camera, but I'm going to do my best to make sure you see all the important features of it. Um, basically what it is, is it's a sound bar. So you think of a sound bar normally, it's kind of long, uh, thin, not too tall, sit right under a TV or maybe even hang it under a TV. Uh, the sound base system from Zvox actually is a little bit wider. So you got about 14 and a half, 15 inches of depth. Uh, it's about 27, 28 inches long and about three and a half, four inches tall. Um, the idea behind their design is it's a wood box. It's got five speakers uh, to include a five and a half inch subwoofer here on the bottom. And the idea behind their design is they want it sitting on a solid surface. Um, I think that amplifies some of the sounds through the room. Um, they also then want your TV to be directly right on top of it. Uh, so I think they took all of that um, into their design process. Let's recommend the customer put it on a solid set, uh, solid um, base, i.e. dresser, TV stand, what have you. Um, and then let's have the customer, or let's recommend to the customer that we put the TV right on top. Makes a lot of sense if you think of it from a visual and audio standpoint. You want the sound to either be surrounding you, i.e. two speakers in front, two speakers in back, and a subwoofer somewhere, or to be right there where the TV is. Um, I originally had it hooked up on a 55 inch TV downstairs. Uh, that TV is actually hung above a fireplace. So unfortunately I couldn't put the 450 right underneath it. I actually had to set it down, probably about three feet down and a couple feet over to the right. So it was a little distracting to be watching the TV and then getting all the sound from that right hand corner down below and to the right hand of the TV. So what I did is I actually brought it up to my room uh, up there I have a 42 inch sharp and I could easily set that right on top of a dresser and then set the TV or set the Z-Box right on the dresser and then set the TV right on top of that. So it kind of had more continuity from what I was viewing and what I was hearing. So it made more sense and I think it was a lot better uh, way to review the Z-Box. Uh, fair, you know, you want to go with however the manufacturer recommends the configuration. So that's what I did. Um, so took it up, put the TV on top, obviously plugged in the power. Um, on the back, you got to look and make your determination on what you want to use. So if we kind of look, oh, let's find it. All right, there. So not too bad. All right, so you start off, you got a couple analogs, right? And then you have a digital. And then you have what also ends up being a digital, but it's almost like a coax connection. It's that little connection that slides right over. Not a true coax. There's no threads on it. Um, I actually do have a power button. So the you, there's like a main power versus a remote on and off power. So you have your power button here. Um, and then you, or power switch, and then your DC in. So those are your connection options. So... Obviously, when you go in to set up your TV for whatever function you want, uh, you got to make sure you choose the correct input or input into the Zvox output of the TV. Uh, <laughs> I made the mistake of trying to put the or using inputs into the TV. So I had a little trouble there. Once, if you go into this and you understand the Zvox and all its connections and you understand where your outputs are from your TV, it actually is really, really easy. I was excited I guess would be the best uh, description of what I was doing so I was rushing around just kind of plugging things in and not really paying attention so if you slow down pay attention go through their little one page directions uh, it really is very easy to set up so pick your uh, your connections um, I tried a couple I tried the optical in uh, which only worked in my case on my CenturyLink box so I have a little CenturyLink box and I could do the optical cable right into that uh, watch TV. Um, sounds great. Um, it's got an AccuVoice feature. That's kind of nice. Uh, it kind of, I don't know if it degrades background sound or just amplifies the voice, but you hear the voices a lot more clear. 
Um, sometimes, I don't know if you, when you guys watch or any of you watch TV on occasion, you know, you've got background noise that dun, 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 and somebody's talking during that. And sometimes you can't hear them as clearly. So you crank up your volume a little bit so you can hear that. Um, this kind of amplifies is how I'm going to describe it. The voices. So you can hear those voices and you still hear that background noise. It doesn't distort the background noise. It just clears up the actual voices of the characters at the TV or the movie show you're watching. So I like that a lot. Um, I didn't like that so much when it came to music. Um, but, you know, to each his own, maybe that's something. I guess I like the sound and the lyrics and maybe not hearing the lyrics as much as the sound when I listen to music. Uh, but when watching TV, that Accu voice was awesome. It was really cool. Uh, cleared up the voices a lot. Didn't have to turn up the volume. I think I could leave the volume, you know, for a number, let's say 10, instead of cranking it up to 15 and maybe even rewinding to make sure I heard it. I didn't have to do that. I didn't do that as frequently. Uh, I, I'm getting a little old. Maybe it's just a hearing thing, but I like the Accu voice. It made uh, watching TV a little better. I can hear the, the characters' voices. Um, so I did the optical into this entry link. Um, I did the um, uh, mini jack, digital mini jack, I think is how they reference it. And that actually goes from, it's a little, looks like a headphone jack, and it will plug into one of your uh, analog connections. Um, or you can go the you know, the red and the white cable into an audio out into one of the analog connections. Um, you can tell a difference. And I believe in their reference material, their uh, directions, they do state that. They, you know, they say, hey, if you can, you know, use the digital. Digital is going to have a better sound quality. And I would agree with that. I, I mean, when I did the mini jack, and which converts it to analog, um, and then you do the analog to analog, and then both of the digital connections, you could tell a difference. It wasn't a huge difference in sound, but there was a difference in the sound. Um, so I can appreciate uh, what they said in the recommendations uh, when it comes to that. So if you can use digital, you want to use digital. I think that's the case in most things when it comes to sound. Um, and it stepped up. Uh, the digital mini jack to the regular analog, I mean, there's a little bit of a difference uh, from the uh, the digital mini jack, I guess that conversion, maybe it's a cleaner conversion versus analog to analog, but there is a little bit of a difference. And then there was a little the bigger difference if you just went straight digital. So uh, I recommend if you can, definitely go digital. Um, as we said, we have the couple digital inputs. You have your two analog inputs. You have your power. You have your power button on the front of it. You have down here below. Uh, you have a, a mute slash power button. Uh, you have a volume and then you have an input selector. So there is a little remote which uh, I should have had that in my hand. Let me see if I can find that and grab that real quick without knocking anything down. There it is. Sorry about that. But you do have a little Zvox 450 home theater system remote. Um, obviously, it has a power button. Uh, it has input button here at the top. There's your AccuVoice button. So that's how you enable or disable the AccuVoice feature. You have an output leveling button. Kind of changes the output level of the compute, the speaker. I don't know that I would call it an amp, but it does kind of change it. Uh, you do have a mute button, you have your volume buttons, uh, you do have right from the remote the ability to uh, raise or lower the bass and or the treble. And then you have uh, a surround sound button, so there's a three different surround sound levels. I always had it on three, I liked the little more, I know it seemed like it added a little bit of emphasis to the sounds that were going on when the TV were, when the show I was playing watched, um, but all this actually provides there's very similar commands to what you have here on the bottom uh, so you have I can get them over there so you got your little power button you got your volume buttons and then you have an input button there and then there's a little IR right there so you want to be able to see that when you get it set up um, being that I just showed you that remote some people might be thinking oh gosh another remote for my you know my TV watching Actually, what's kind of nice about this is uh, I use my CenturyLink remote. I uh, took the remote and you kind of put it right close up to the little inputs here. And then you hit a couple buttons and then it says good. And then you hit you hit the volume up and it says, okay, that's good. And then it says, all right, go to volume down. You go to volume down. It says, uh, 
good and then it wants you to redo it to kind of verify or validate it so you validate it and then you do the same thing for the mute button so then anytime I I turned on my cable box and my TV because I have those uh, also synced up to that Centering remote. It would turn on the 450 uh, and would turn everything off. When I turn the volume up, it would turn the volume up. Um, it also has another feature because my TV downstairs, when I originally had this hooked up to it, I would turn off the TV speakers. And as soon as I tried to hit the volume up on the CenturyLink remote there also, it would turn up the S-Box, but you get this big old warning thing. Um, there. Uh, PS feature it gives you the ability to kind of work around that um, so you don't see that warning uh, I guess the warning isn't that big a deal but it is a little bit of annoyance so they give you a workaround for that so you don't get that hey the TV speakers off I don't know if I'm actually outputting sound error warning is essentially what it was saying uh, did the same thing on this TV up here I don't get the warning here um, but I just thought make it clean make it simple make it the same um, use the up and down. Like I said, the volume works great. The power works great. Uh, I still use the ZVox remote for the inputs. So if I wanted to go from analog one or digital one to a different input, uh, I would use the remote for that. I couldn't figure out how to make that work on the CenturyLink remote, but not a big deal. Um, worst case scenario, I think I'd go from maybe Bluetooth to whatever input I'm using, maybe the digital input, uh, which actually brings up another point. Uh, you can do uh, Bluetooth streaming, which was kind of cool. Uh, you set up your device, you uh, hit the inputs on the ZVox 450, and then you take that and uh, you put it to the Bluetooth input, and it'll flash out to your Bluetooth to let you know, hey, I'm ready for Bluetooth. Um, and then you tell your phone or tablet or whatever you're going to stream to it, and point it to the ZVox, and it pairs pretty quickly, uh, very easily, and then you start streaming your music. Um, I listen to some country, I listen to some rock, I uh, listen to a little bit of R&B, a little bit of uh, rap, and it all sounded really good. Um, I could adjust the bass and the treble, so that obviously helped with the sound. You know, maybe turn up the bass for the R&B and the rap, maybe turn it down a little bit for the rock and the country, but it all sounded really good. Um, actually really excited about it. I'm actually trying to figure out a way. Right now, It's I, I had it set up in my room, and that's where it's been for a couple days now. Um, to really test it out and listen it because that was where I felt like I was giving the fairest review of it and I'm I'm really I'm wanting to put this down on my 55 inch somehow I just got to figure out a way to get it underneath the TV so it makes the most sense so you get that visual uh, where you're watching the TV and the kind of the sound comes from essentially the general direction that that off and to the right stuff was it was really distracting the sound was still great I mean that didn't change the quality of the sound but it was just distracting when I was watching TV so um, and if I do that my fear is I'm gonna hate watching TV in my room because I'm gonna if I move this down there so uh, I might actually consider getting one have to consider getting one of these for my room uh, my wife and I like to watch movies together up in our room sometimes so um, so again, sound quality is really good for movies. Uh, you know, it's it's that you know that extra oomph. I don't know. I mean, it's not true surround sound in a sense, uh, but it's good quality. It has really improved video or video watching or TV watching or movie watching uh, in my house. Um, I had a little soundbar on the 55 inch. And it's okay, but after watching a movie on this in my room, it's like, oh, I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that soundbar. And that soundbar cost me about 150 bucks, and this is 2.99 on Amazon. Again, it's the Zvox uh, Soundbase 450 home theater system. Check it out. Look it out on Amazon. They currently have it for 2.99. This is easily worth double. Easily worth double what I paid for that soundbar. Uh, like I get, like I said, the soundboard is about. A, I think I paid 149.99, and this is 2.99, so essentially double. Definitely worth the price. Um, with the five speakers that it has built into it, um, I don't know if they're exactly tweeters or not. You can't really get into this thing easily, so I didn't want to try to break into it. But you got the five speakers for your general sound, and then you got the 5.25 inch subwoofer here. It really, really works together, and I think the fact that they recommend the TV be on top and this being on the hard service helps to provide a little bit of an amplification, amplification in order to better cover a room. Um, 
I don't know that it would work really well in a huge room, but my bedroom is about 10 foot by 15 foot, and it's awesome. I love it in here. Um, I've actually, as since this has been in the house and I moved it upstairs, I've been watching more TV in my room because this provides, you know, really good quality sound that I can have when I want to watch that movie, whether it be Netflix or, like I said, I got CenturyLink, so maybe I'm watching a movie on HBO or Showtime or what have you. Uh, I believe that's pretty much 5.1 sound, which is all. It's great. Um, I really enjoyed listening to music over it. My wife enjoyed listening to music over it. She was a little sad when I brought it up here because she likes to, you know, stream Pandora or something on the TV. And when we had this plugged in and she was listening to music, you know, it filled the room almost essentially our whole bottom level instead of just a TV speaker. So it improved that. Uh, a great deal for her, especially when she's listening to music. She's doing whatever she's got to do in the, around the house, and, you know, the music is playing instead of carrying her phone around, which is what she was doing. So um, improve that uh, a great deal when it comes to, comes to uh, music listening in the house. Obviously, video or TV, um, you know, did YouTube and all that kind of stuff on the Roku's through the Zvox uh, didn't find anything that had any problems. Uh, wouldn't expect it to. I mean, good sound is going to be good sound almost anywhere, but uh, no problems on the, all the apps that I use, whether it be Netflix, the Showtime app, uh, the YouTube app, um, the History Channel app. There's a few different apps that I like to use on a Roku. All of those had no problem and all sounded really good through the Zvox. Obviously, the movies, obviously, regular TV pro programming all sounded great on the Z-Box. Um, so, I really, really like this. Um, and again, I'm trying to figure out a way to get it into my living room uh, to where I can take advantage of the quality. Uh, once I do get it in the living room, and I'm pretty determined, uh, there aren't too many reviews that I do that come up and I really focus on integrating it into my life. This is going to be one that I'm going to integrate into my life. And if I do, do get it down, or once I do get it down there on my big TV, uh, I'm probably going to have to go out and, and purchase one. Maybe not the 450. I might go a little bit smaller model, but another model with kind of the same technology. I'm going to have to figure, figure out a way to get one and add it to my room because I'm going to need it in both places. Otherwise, I think that whichever TV doesn't have it is going to be less of a TV in my mind because it doesn't have the Zvox 450 home theater system or the Zvox sound based system uh, playing the, the music or playing the movies or playing the TV behind it. It just changes. I forgot once upon a time I had a surround sound system kind of got away from it. And now this is kind of ruining TV for me. I got to have, you know, that Zvox system, uh, sound based system I, I need to have that now it really changes the way I'm watching TV I need that extra input um, you know that that sound input it really changes and modifies the way I think it improves obviously uh, TV and movies especially more so movies I would guess um, and obviously music uh, one of those things you know we got little Bluetooth speakers around but this are far out plays any of those Bluetooth speakers so uh, again, the Zvox Sound Base 450 home theater system. Um, I'm going to give it five stars. Um, the only real negative, and maybe might make me consider it four and a half stars, is the fact that it is a little big. So it does make it difficult to find a place, like in my case, I can't put it on a fireplace mantle where I can, like in this, now I can do a sound bar. Um, so the, the weight, or not the weight, the size of it is a little pro prohibiting. So that might lead me to a four and a half. But I'm, it's like four and a half, five stars. And really the only thing, the only negative about it is that you're limited on where you can install it or use it. Because if it's not right under that TV, uh, the TV that you're watching, it is a little difficult to get used to. And I can't say that I got used to it, but... Um, you, some people might, you know, it might be okay to play it down below and to the right or left of a TV if it can't be right under it. Um, that was distracting to me. I couldn't watch TV that way. So I had to find another TV to where I could get it right underneath. Um, but, uh, they do reference and they do recommend that you play it, put it on a, a solid surface, you know, a dresser or a TV stand of some sort. And they do recommend that the TV sit right on top of it. So I don't, I, I 
guess in some senses I can't really knock it for that because they make you aware of that. You know, they in their recommendations they recommend they tell you how it sounds best and, and the configuration that is gonna sound best. So uh I think as a result of that and then making that recommendation, I'll have to go with five stars. If you follow their recommendation, this is five stars. If you don't pay attention to the recommendation and you go outside of that, um, you know, I guess that's buyer beware situation. You got to know what you're buying. You got to know what, uh, how the, your TV is configured and how the Zvox sound base home theater system is going to complement that. So, I guess that would be my recommendation. Make sure you understand how the Zvox system, the sound base system works, uh, where your TV is configured or set up or installed, however you want to reference that, and make sure you can utilize the sound base system from Zvox, in whichever versions, they have three or four different versions. Um, understand how that works and make sure you understand how you meld those together. So once again, this is the Zvox sound base 450 home theater system um, it looks great um, sounds great easy to install if you pay attention to the install instructions and don't just go plugging things in um, happy to have it trying to figure out more ways to use it um, this is byron with dragon blogger check back with us every day all day we're always reviewing new toys for everybody thanks for your time